Hi everyone, my name is Saikra and today I'm going to be showing you how I go about drawing animals. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about an animal we're all familiar with and then compare that animal to other mammals to see what the similarities are and what the differences are. So this animal kind of looks like this. It's got a head, it's got a spine, rib cage, pelvis, legs, and arms. Right, so here we have a person, a human. And this is really almost all I need to use as reference to draw virtually any other mammal, uh, with the exception of two bones, and those are the scapula, or shoulder blades. And these are in the back, behind the rib cage. And they connect at the collarbone. And that's it. And then they just float. They don't connect on the rib cage at all. And they're just held together by uh, muscle and tendon. All right, so how do we get from here to understanding how to draw other animals? Well, let's move this person off to the side, and I'll show you. The key is understanding that when it comes to the foundations, humans and other mammals really aren't that different. Both humans and other mammals have heads and spines, rib cage pelvis, legs, arms, and scapula. The difference lies in the proportion of these. I've duplicated this figure twice, and now let's change some of the proportions of the other two and see what we can come up with. All right, first thing I want to do is make this head smaller. And lengthen this neck. Second thing I'm going to do is fix some of the proportions of the first guy here, because it's kind of bugging me. Let's give him a head and just place the spine a bit more accurately. Okay, so moving back, we have the head, lengthen the neck. Now, what I'm going to do is increase the size of the rib cage. And then I'm going to change the spine so it curves up in this way. I'm also going to bring the pelvis further back and a bit angled. And now for the legs, the upper part of the leg, it's just going to change angle because of the change with the pelvis. And now I'm going to shorten the lower, the lower half of the leg. Now with our foot, I'm going to bring the heel it would be here. I'm going to bring that back. So now there's a, a longer heel bone. And then here's the toes. Now with the arm, I'm going to increase the size of the scapula a bit. Change the angle just a little bit. I'm going to shorten the upper 
half of the arm, shorten the lower half, and now where the hand would be, I'm going to shorten the fingers. And at the end of the spine is the tailbone, and I'm going to increase the size of that. And I just realized I think the pelvis curves in this way, not that way. So I've just corrected that. Okay, and for the third one, I'm going to make the spine longer. Change the curve a bit. I'm going to make the neck longer. And I'll give more oval skull. Now, the rib cage is going to get significantly bigger. It's going to really taper towards the pelvis. As for the pelvis, it's going to change angle a bit. And now the upper leg is going to get much smaller. And the lower leg too. We're going to have a tailbone too that gets extended. Now the scapula here, that's going to change a lot from our original guy. It's going to really grow. And the shape from this is going to look more like that. So for the upper arm, here's the shoulder, that's going to get really tiny, just like the upper leg got much smaller. So now the elbow has gone from here to here. Now here's the lower arm, and here's the wrist, so from here it's gone to here. here is the ankle. Now here the heel bone, we saw it got much bigger here. It's not going to get that much bigger but the direction is going to change quite a bit. And now all this is this. This is the foot. And the toes are going to come out here. Same thing is going to happen with the hand. This is all the hand. These are fingers and fingertips. Okay, so we have three different proportions, and I have to admit it's quite confusing. So I'm going to flesh these out, and we'll see what we get.
So as you can see, everything is based off the same forms. Here's a human rib cage. Here's a cat's rib cage and a horse's rib cage. They all have rib cages. They're just different in proportion in relation to the body and in shape. Same thing with the arm. Upper arm of the human, upper arm of the cat, upper arm of the horse. You can see the angles are the same pretty much. It's just the proportions are different. Now with horses it gets really weird because here's the lower arm, here's the hand, here's the finger, and this is actually the fingernail. So the horse is actually balancing on its fingernail. So then the next thing to do is to just find different animals and study exactly what their proportions are. For instance, here with the cow, we can start to find certain land landmarks. For instance, um, the scapula here. And then we have the upper arm. Here's a bone. So here's the lower arm. Here's the hand. So the finger would be. That's the fingernail. Oh, this is the rib cage. And then we have the pelvis here. The spine is here. Here's the skull, tailbone, then here we have upper leg, lower leg, heel, foot, toe, and toenail. Now, it's not that easy, but after a while, you get better at seeing these similarities between animals and then once you've memorized how big the proportions are in relation to each other you can start now maybe I'll make a series of uh, how to draw specific animals. But the main point of this video is to show that humans and other mammals have a lot in common and finding those similarities is going to help you draw a wide range of animals. Good luck and thanks for watching.